Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. Anti-vaccination leaders fuel black mistrust of medical establishment as COVID-19 kills people of color. The memory of the horrific Tuskegee syphilis study makes some African Americans, or I like to say black Americans, suspicious of a coronavirus vaccine. By Peter Jamison, July 17, 2020 at 4.40 p.m. The message came to Eric Underwood earlier this summer. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. wanted him to stand by his side at a rally on the steps of the Colorado Capitol in Denver. Underwood, a black American entrepreneur coming off of a failed U.S. Senate bid in Colorado's Democratic primary, had long revered the Kennedy family for his legacy of civil rights activism. But until recently, he would not have guessed the cause that would bring him together with the member of that dynasty on a Sunday in June. Kennedy, one of the nation's leading anti-vaccination activists, was in Denver to oppose a bill tightening the state's exemption from Im immunizations for school children. After months of discussion with vaccine skeptics, Underwood had adopted Kennedy's cause as his own, despite the overwhelming consensus of doctors and scientists who say vaccines are safe for most people of every race. Underwood now believed that the drugs not only were dangerous, but also posed a special threat to black children. I see this as an injustice for everybody, he said, especially for the black community. The bill ultimately passed, but not before debate over it showcased a remarkable new alliance between the anti-vaccine movement and black leaders in Colorado. Among those who testified against the bill, alongside Kennedy and white parents, were a local NAACP leader and a prominent Black Lives Matter activist. The dynamics on display in Denver have nationwide implications as scientists race to create a vaccine for the deadly coronavirus, which has taken a disproportionately steep toll on people of color. Although Black Americans stand to benefit enormously from a vaccine, they remain distrustful of medical establish establishment with a history that includes the Tuskegee syphilis study and surgical experiments on enslaved people, not to mention the ongoing disparities they confront in the U.S. healthcare system. A recent Washington Post ABC News poll found that 63% of black adults said they were likely to get coronavirus vaccine, compared with 70% of whites and 78% of Hispanics. Only 32% of black adults said they would definitely get a vaccine compared with 45% of whites and Hispanics. The possibility that anti-vaccination leaders who have already made common calls with those dismissing the risk of the pandemic and protesting state safety restrictions could further undermine faith in the vaccine among people of color is profoundly worrisome for public health officials. It is of great concern to me said Anthony S. Fossey, the federal government's top infectious disease expert. If there's anyone you want to get vaccinated and anyone for whom vaccination would be most beneficial, it would be for the people anti-vaccination activists are trying to influence not to get vaccinated. He said it was vital not only to build, Afri build black Americans trust in the vaccine that is ultimately developed, but also to persuade them to participate in clinical trials ensuring that the medicines are safe and effective for all racial and ethnic groups efforts to enroll more people of color in clinical trials for other drugs have been underway for years with mixed results repeated studies have demonstrated the safety of vaccines for the vast majority of those who receive them many count immunizations which have all but eliminated diseases that once that once sickened crippled or killed millions of people every year as among the greatest advances in the history of medicine, the 1998 study by Andrew Wakefield that purported to, a show a, purported to show a link between the common vaccine and autism, launching the modern anti-vaccination movement was exposed as fraudulent and retracted. Anti-vaccination activists' interest in minority communities is not new. Kennedy has repeatedly sought allies among black American leaders. Several years ago, Wakefield, the disgraced British ex-physician who was also behind the 2006 film, vaxxed. From cover-up to catastrophe, 
helped persuade many Somali immigrants in Minneapolis to avoid the vaccine for measles, mumps, and rubella. The Somali community was later hit by the state's largest measles outbreak in nearly three decades. But amid the social fracturing surrounding COVID-19 and the ferment over racial injustice that has swept the United States following the killing of George Floyd in police custody, there are signs that the anti-vaccine movement's message is gaining new traction. Visions of Tuskegee, it was last year after she and the other activists had toiled to block an earlier school immunization bill that Denver chiropractor Julie Bogdan says she realized something was amiss in their movement. It was apparent to me that it looked very, it looked very white, to be honest with you, Bogdan recalled. She decided to send out feelers among leaders in Denver's black community. Her goal, she said, was simply to ensure that the people of color were adequately educated about the alleged risk of inoculation. The intentions was just to allow their community to have information and to, desi- and to decide on their own behalf whether or not it was a movement they wanted to participate in, Bogdan said. Though, an African, though a black American friend, Bogdan convened, convened a summit of sorts at a Chipotle restaurant with Theo Wilson, a Black Lives Matter activist in Denver. Wilson said he had questioned the safety of vaccines but had not been involved in activism on the subject. He said the movement's themes, a predatory pharmaceutical industry profiting from the ignorance of vulnerable people, resonated with him. Visions of Tuskegee still dance in our heads, man, Wilson said in an interview. There is in the black community common cause, much larger than people would think, because of our history in the medical community. Bogdan also broached the subject with one of her patients, Joyce Brooks, a black woman who heads the education committee of the Colorado NAACP. Brooks helped arrange the presentation for the Denver's chapter's leadership by Colorado anti-vaccination activist Phil Silberman and Toby Rogers, an eco an economist who frequently attacks the safety of vaccines on social media and has done work in the past for Kennedy's Children's Health Defense nonprofit group. At that meeting, the pair ran through data they claimed showed that black children were more prone than white children to suffer vaccine injuries. Brooks said her NAACP colleagues were impressed by the information and taken aback that Democratic legislators pushing to narrow vaccine exemptions had not consulted with them. People really felt informed, Brooks said, and rather angry that they hadn't heard about this. Silverman and Rogers also met earlier this year with a group that included black American pastors and other community leaders at a Denver steakhouse. Underwood, who attended, said their message was well received. Let me tell you this, the black community gets it, Underwood said. The black pastors got it, I got it certainly. At least four black leaders, including Underwood, Wilson, and Brooks, spoke against the state legislation strengthening vaccination requirements when it came up for a vote last month, according to the Mountain West News Bureau, which reported extensively on the debate over the legislation. Assertions of disproportionate harm to black Americans from inoculation are often based on the 2004 Centers for Disease Control and Prevention study that set off one of the most bizarre episodes in vaccine science history. That study, conducted in Georgia, observed slightly higher rates of autism among children who had received immunizations than among those who had not. The authors said this was probably because autistic children were required to be vaccinated to participate in preschool special education programs. Their findings were called into question when one of the authors, William Thompson, later claimed the CDC has suppressed data showing a stronger link between vaccines and autism in black children and in white children. Thompson's allegations made during secretly recorded telephone conversations with anti-vaccine activist Brian Hooker were never substantiated. A 2014 paper Hooker published on the subject was retracted. Immunizations are so important I cannot think of any other medical intervention that's more important, said David Satcher, a black physician who served as U.S. Surgeon General from 98 to 2002 and who before that was director of the CDC. I would be very suspicious of someone who tried to talk to me, talk to talk me out of immunization, my immunizing, 
immunizing my children. Satcher acknowledged that public health officials face special barriers among black Americans, but said it's vital that they continue advocating the benefits of vaccines that have been proved safe and effective. On Thursday, the president of the American Board of Internal Medicine and other urged the federal government to enlist doctors and scientists of color to build confidence in the coronavirus vaccine in minority communities. In a letter to Monchef Slyo, who is heading up the Trump administration's coronavirus vaccine development program, they said health officials should take the trust gap seriously as a problem to be addressed. Every bit as substantive as having enough syringes and needles with which to deliver a vaccine. Not going to be guinea pigs. The extent of that trust gap has already become evident during the coronavirus pandemic. In Hobson City, Alabama, a predominantly black town of 800 people, Mayor Alberta Cooley McCrory said residents have largely avoided free coronavirus tests that she arranged with help from a local hospital and county health officials. Their fear, she said, is that the tests are part of a secret experiment to infect them with the virus. They're not going to be guinea pigs, McCrory said, summarizing the concerns of town residents. They don't want to end up like the people did in Tuskegee. Um, she said they likewise have expressed reluctance about the prospect of a coronavirus vaccine. They definitely don't want shots of any kind, said McCrory, who has begun conferring with her counterparts in the Alabama Conference of Black Mayors on strategies to allay suspicions. Hobson City is about 100 miles north of the town whose name is synonymous with one of history's most notorious breaches of medical ethics, Tuskegee, Alabama. Beginning in the 1930s, U.S. government scientists tracked the progress of untreated syphilis in hundreds of black men, concealing the true nature of their research and withhold, withholding penicillin after it was identified as an effective treatment. Instances of mistreatment and inequity are not confined to the history books. Studies have repeatedly found that black patients with broken bones, appendicitis, or other serious ailments have been less likely to receive painkillers than white patients. In 2016, researchers at the University of Virginia found that half of the white medical students they surveyed were willing to entertain one or more false statements about biological differences based on race, such as the notion that black Americans have less sensitive nerve endings than whites. Such ongoing personal experiences, rather than notorious episodes such as Tuskegee, are the foundation for many black Americans' mistrust of doctors, said Harriet A. Washington, author of Medical Apartheid, The Dark History of Medical Experimentation on Black Americans from Colonial Times to the Present. This has gone on systematically for 400 years and people have an oral history, she said. That history is now returning to haunt the U.S. medical establishment. Federal health officials are considering offering some of the first doses of a coronavirus vaccine to the most vulnerable groups, including black Americans, Latinos, and the elderly. But their motive for doing so, to speed medicine to people who have suffered inordinate, inordinately high rates of severe sickness and death from COVID-19, is still being questioned. Dale Bigtree, a national leader in the anti-vaccination movement, alleged that the true rationale for a phase release of a vaccine could be to observe its effects in black and brown people turning them into unwitting test subjects. The United States of America has a history of testing on black American people. Big Tree said in an interview, to all of my black American brothers and sisters, I want them to know, look, it looks like they might try to create a fear based on you to make you part of a safety trial. That suggestion, that suggestion vigorously denied by Falsey is one that Brooks, the Colorado NAACP official, finds all too plausible. Black and 73 years old, she falls into a vulnerable demographic group to whom health officials would like to offer a vaccine to as soon as possible. But if that day comes, she says she already knows what her answer will be. It's another experiment, she said, and I would hope black Americans would say, no, you're not shooting me up with that. So based on the history and I'm sorry for it being so long, but this is something that we as black Americans and as a people need to understand. Um, I like to make videos like this, even though these videos don't get a lot of views. I really don't care if they do. 
I just want people who are able to get it to actually have a chance to understand that we are guinea pigs. As black Americans, as black brothers and black sisters, we're basically, excuse me, we're guinea pigs. All right. They want to instill a fear in us at first. So it'll keep us from going to take the test. But I don't trust the test because. Those pharmaceutical companies have made billions of millions of millions, billions of dollars off of testing trial runs. And sometimes if if the trial doesn't work or the vaccine isn't um, if the vaccine, if the vaccine is not edible for you, they still make their money off of it. To me, they're not looking to heal anybody because the flu, the flu shots don't heal you completely. You still catch the flu because they shoot you up with the flu. And when they shoot you with the flu, you still can catch it. They're going to shoot you with this COVID-19 and basically they're going to use it to try to fight the COVID-19 to try to keep it out of your body. So to me, I just don't understand that white Americans are so blind to this, but I understand why and, and other people are blind to this. Latinos, Latinas, they're going through the same thing in their community. All the minorities are always being targeted, but mainly black people because they have a natural fear of black Americans because we're strong. When we come together, it scares them. Even at the workplace, if we come together, they're afraid. They don't want you to be next to your guy or your homeboy or your homegirl because they that instills fear. They remember the civil rights, um, their civil rights movement. They remember everything from history to Nat, Nat Turner and other people before Nat Turner that don't get the recognition for holding um, uprisings and rebellions against our masters, against the system that continues to constrict us. And this vaccine, I believe, is just another ploy to infect and continue to have population control, which is to continue to eradicate the planet of the dark skinned brother and sister. They're continuing to do that. They want all the black people to be half breeds and light skinned like Steph Curry. I mean, not Steph Curry, but on Pat Mahomes and all these other guys so we can be docile. So we'll be easily to control. The lighter you are, the easily, the easily, um, the easily controlled you can become. And shout out to Organically Powered Life. Organically Powered Life, I can't find that article you sent me. But I was going to do a video on that, too. It's just that I do sports because I have a lot of sports fans on my page. But I'm going to start getting back to these videos. But shout out to Organically Powered Life. That brother there, um, that brother there, he, he tells the truth. Like, everybody's worried about sports. We need to be worried about this vaccination. And he's right. They are literally trying to kill us and continue eradicating us. And the people who I spoke about in this um, article, they're very right because they they want you to be shoot shot up with this vaccination to be a guinea pig. And then once that work, they can trigger something else, which is like the COVID-20 or whatever. And then they're going to try to continue kill us. It's, it's going to be another disease to come that's going to wipe us out. You know, they want to continue experimenting and hurting the black people or hurting brothers and sisters to continue having control. And it's a shame, but that's just how it is. That's just how it is, man. And that's just how it's going to be. I just think that people um, people don't understand that. I just still think people are still living in a box. They're still taking the blue pill, you know, and they believe that they believe in all these conspiracies, but they don't believe that the NBA is trying to help LeBron or the NFL is trying to help certain people, you know, but we got to think about this type of stuff. This stuff here is detrimental to our children. This here, what it could do is it'll keep our children sterile where they can't produce kids. That's what they've been doing. They've been shooting babies up as well in the hospital. So it could keep them sterile. So the population will dwindle. The dark skinned brother and the dark skinned sister are the kings and queens of the world, period. Me. Me and my king, I'm I'm not a king. I'm just a man. I'm I'm light skinned. I don't consider myself the children, the child of God. The person who's the child of God is like my cousin, my cousin Travis. He's a dark skinned brother. My uncle, he's a dark skinned. All the dark skinned brothers and sisters to me are closer 
to God than we are. To me, we're more docile because we're more lighter, the much lighter we are now. We can have our own opinion. We can still be strong. We can still fight. But at the end of the day, I just call myself, um, I just call myself, um, a brother trying to get there. You know, I'm a brother who's still trying to reach the peak of what God had in store for myself and others. And I'm not talking about religion, F religion, religion ain't nothing but a control system to keep us divided and to continue to conquer us and to plant seeds in our minds about this is this and this is that when it's not they convinced you paul was one of the disciples disciples when he wasn't he was just a con artist he was a con man so um let me know in the um, comment section what do you feel about the vaccine do you feel like it'll help us are you going to go get vaccinated let me know um in the comment section what you think about this Thank you for listening and supporting the page, man. Um, shout out to who did it this time and C Pen for the win. Please go to their channels. C Pen for the win. He has um, I think episode number fourteen, I believe, is up. I didn't get to check the, the previous ones. I'm gonna try to check those out, but it's it's a good show, man. And C Pen knows his stuff. And um, who did it this time has um, what happened to the enforcers. That's a good video. You guys, I'm still watching it. Um, I like it. He's giving shout out to Albert Bell who played baseball. Um, I remember Albert Bell, tough guy, and he's showing Lawrence Taylor. He is the LT. There's no original. There's no, he's LT. This LT, he's a Ladanian. He's soft. He, he not on that level. Okay. He's not on that level. But um, who did it this time? C Pen for the win. Look out for them. Also, go check out that video, Detroit T and the town's own, and um, Uncle Frank, the town's own. Uncle Frank, man, like seriously, him and Detroit T have a lot of knowledge they're talking about on that. I wanted to put that out. Um, and also, go to Carcino for Life's page. We did a um, stream yard last night after the um, post fight. It was real fun last night, man. We was, <laughs> Nate Robinson got knocked out, man. It was, it was ugly, man, but. Nate, Nate Robinson, um, he just threw away whatever the trainer was teaching. The trainer was teaching him the right way how to box and to set up his punches and to set up his um his combinations. And he just he just went left <laughs> in his show yesterday. He went left. So um and and again um shout out to everybody on the page, Terrell Hubbard. Um, who else? Um, I'm missing somebody. Valentin, Nicholas Jacobs. AKA the angry man. Um, shout out to everybody, man. If I missed you, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for supporting it. Steve Alexander, um, Mr. Um, v, man. Mr. V is cool, even though we disagree a lot, but he's a good brother coming to my page to support. I, I really respect his opinion. Um, you know, I respect everybody. If I missed you, I apologize. Again, just come support the page. But again, let me know about the vaccination. Are you going to get it? And do you believe that it's a ploy to continue gentrification? I mean, not gentrification, but extermination. Because I believe it's extermination. They're trying to eradicate the planet of all the dark-skinned brothers and sisters. They want everybody to be light-skinned and turn that to the new black so they could, so they could control us easier. So um, let me know in the comment section what you think like comment subscribe share this please hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications i am doing a stream yard tonight after eight all right i will let you know then what it's going to be about we're having a stream yard please come by support the page tell everybody about it so we can get as many people on there i want everybody's opinion and please guys come on and be respectable please don't go overboard a troll because you will be you you will be dealt with you know what i'm saying so um thank you for listening um and donate to the page you can um cash at me at the word welcome the number two in hdii tv thank you for listening and we're out live boy